Hello and welcome back. So this is our third example where we're going to be implementing the writer interface. And as you might notice a pattern, the first two examples were simple, but they were getting increasingly complex. First it was just a simple write counter, then a bytes counter, and today we're going to do even more trivial, probably, well not more trivial, it's a little harder, um, but more contrived in a way, um, a age tracker. And basically it's an average age tracker. What we're going to do is say, assuming that we're reading thousands of users from some data source, and as users, we read those users, we kind of want to keep a running average of what's the average age of the users we've seen so far, or persons. And so um, basically, that's going to be it. Again, kind of contrived, but it can actually have real... Um, application uses or something like it. It doesn't have to be an age averager. It could be average of something as you collect in data, keep tracking the sum or the count or the average. Okay. So the same kind of idea. And um, so let's walk, walk through it. And so as usual, we're going to start here and start with a previous code, which we do most times. And um, Computer's a little bit slow, it's doing some work in the background there. And we're going to zoom in a bit. And so let's get started. So now we want to do track the age of people. So type person is age struct and it contains name, string, and age, which we know that our age is never going to be a negative number, so it's going to be some unsigned int value. And so the question is, should it be unsigned int 16, 32, or 8 bit? So we can say int 8 bit because that is more than enough from 0h to 255 is more than enough. But we don't expect a person to have be more than um, older than 127 for no anyway. So we're going to say that though we don't expect that. So um, so now, okay, so we have our counter, and so what we're trying to do is to have a H counter, and so let's call this uh, H counter, oh, H averager, um, but okay, let's do that, um, percent D, um, we're going to call it H averager, A V A V A age average, A V A G average come on age averager also something i can't spell and well actually i can never spell and so let's leave it as int for now but so we're going to see some problems as we try to develop this and so <clears throat> so this is the age averager writer okay and so the idea is that if I have some people, if I have, let's say, Bob person and is uh, wrong thing, person is when you, I tell you, mixing up these languages. Um, so Bobby and he's 20, 15, whatever. And then, come on, Jane. and age 40 okay let's do 25 and so the average age if i try to write this out to my writer so you might say this is a really contrived example but assuming that oh, i'm reading in a number of people from a database hundreds of them thousands of them and so i'm i have this thing i want to figure out their average age so of course i could pass that function or i could just pull out their age and keep calculating the average but if i know go and i know i could do a writer like this I might just write the age averager where I just write a person to it and then it keeps track of how many people have seen and their average age. So if it needs to calculate the average age, then I just said it needs to keep track of how many people have seen and the sum and of course the count in order to calculate the average. So this can be a simple integer value or rather a struct and we want to be able to do a sum and so we should do like a, and this since it's always increasing, it's a U int value, and we can do. Um, that depends on how many we gonna people we're gonna see. But if it's a really big database, 
we should probably do u in 64 and our count should also is never going to be negative so that we can say you know is u in 64 if we want or u in 32 doesn't really matter but let's say we make just for simplicity make both the same type okay and so now here when we have a averager and i'm not really going to care about the name of the value here and when someone writes a person to it, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take their age and um, average it. So let's say we don't need this right now, and we don't really need that right now. Let's take get rid of all this. And so I have Jane and Bob there, so I have my age averager. And so the idea is that I have this thing that can calculate age, and if I do this, and I pass Bob to it, and then I say C that right, and pass Jane to it, what I would expect is, is to be able to see in this example, 10 plus 25 is 45, plus five is 50, and average of those two ages is 25. I should expect to see 25 being printed out, right? Um, so we can get around to that in a minute, but um, here there's a problem. I'm trying to pass a person and here it's expecting a byte. So for now, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to say, assuming this was just a person. And so if this was just a person, then again, we don't expect this to fail. So we're going to return the length, um, well, in this case, we just return in um, one, for example, because um, we're cheating for now um, until we get our C legs under us. So we can come into it. And so what I need to do, so C is a pointer to this av C average structure. So all I really need to do is say C that count plus, you know, equal one, which is the exact same thing as C that count is equals to C that count plus one. Okay, come on, plus one. Or even better yet, easier, I can just say C plus plus. Okay, and that says increment that value there. And so then C that sum is equals to, or just plus equal, um, the person's age, which is p that h. So if I keep every time somebody writes a person, I keep counting up their age and how many persons I've seen. Then eventually, when it's time to print out the average, I can do that. Well, we know that all for the printf function, we've implemented the string stringer interface already. I simply need to implement the stringer interface for a averager, right? A age averager, and so this is the stringer interface which returns as a string method that returns a string and so now when that is called all i have to do is return a string right so the string i'm trying to return is going to be uh, fmt that f s printf which we have seen before and we haven't really explained and percent v and it's going to be um, C that sum divided by C that count, right? And that is going to give us the average when it goes to print out here. And so why is this complaining? Invalid operation C that plus, uh, why is that? Anyway, I don't know if I, why is this 8-bit? Ah, look at that. We're trying to add a uint 8 to a uint 16, so we should convert this to a u in 64, cast that 8-bit value, and we could cast because we just have a New York type here. And so now, when we do a go run main, now we get 25 just as we expected, okay? And so if we have another person, Mary, colon equal person, um, Mary and H7, when we run this, oh, wait a second, Mary declare and not use. Of course, Mary declare and not use. Come on. All right, and we go here, 
and we run this there we go so that is working fine except we haven't quite implemented the right interface we've added a right method to our person but we haven't implemented the right interface because the right interface expect a um, byte slice right a slice of byte and so this is implementing it but this guy here complaining because we're trying to pass thing so what about if we implemented a age to byte method on because that's the only thing we really need to be a byte we don't need the whole structure to be a byte if we wanted the whole structure we could have had a person that to byte you know method we can implement but all we want is the h to be a to byte array right or byte slice so let's just do that age to byte so this is a little bit misleading because it should be a byte slice but anyway let's implement it so font um we're gonna add to c our avenger again and again we don't need to modify it so we this time we can do a copy and it's h to byte because we're not modifying anything and it returns a slice byte does that make sense and so since we return a slice byte what we're going to say is you know var buff is some um you know slice of byte and let's think about it for a second well if in terms of slice of byte since we're just done with age and a byte value which is an 8-bit value as we know and we did say that our age is never going to be fit more than its 8-bit value so we know it all just one element um, value we really need to be specifying so we can say see that age uh, where is it see that age that's averager uh, we need this to be a person uh, person so we're implementing this for person p right that's what we call it on so p that age and so we pass that in there and then we return um, this buffer right and that is pretty much it now the only um, issue here is that this might complain that how you have a p you unsigned int and so we can we can turn that into a byte by saying let's cast this to a byte right and once this save I should well of course I need to do equal here I have my equal and so once this save it's going to reformat properly and then now I go here and I run my code and ha huh, why does it say type byte has no field or method h oh of course because i didn't go back and change this so now that i am passing in a slice of bytes and i want to return exactly and this is not going to fail again so i'm returning l i mean i could return uh you know yeah let's leave this l but it's possible that somebody mr trivius could say hey you know what i have var um you know pointer you know to person or something like that and because the pointer you allows you to you know so they can say var p um, pointer to person and that person is nil and then they might still call p that they might still say write and I want to write this null thing right and so in that case um, the code is going to blow up of course because you try to, to dereference this to call and then um, it doesn't have a thing so it might um, pass in there and be invalid but so we don't really have to worry about um, but you know you might want to protect against some runtime thing um, where somebody might actually use a pointer and then you don't want your code to blow up so what you might want to do is say here if I have a null pointer so this is fine length of P is zero um, even if it's null but you might actually say you know if c equals to nil what you want to do is return zero and then you know from the errors package you do new and says 
you can say invalid va parameter or something like that. P R A M E T E E R. Now for a sudden, I can't I cannot spell. And then, well, the next thing you might want to do, but instead of doing if if and all this stuff, we know about switch. So we do a switch statement, and here we just do case this, and then we do colon, and that's the first case. And then the next case would be if um, the value that you get for age, which is, you know, if you get zero, uh, 127 is less than P of zero. So we know that's going to be a byte. Now, if you fail this case, we pass through, we know that P is not null. So, oh, let's see here. This is P in case somebody passed in like a null um, pointer here. Um, so if P is null, then return in value parameter. If this is the case, if P is not null, but the value passed into as an age is greater than the age we, we expect, we're gonna return again zero and then errors that new and I say age out of range, right? Because um, we expect a, you know, our age must be less than 127. Less than or equal to, right? All right, and then if it's though this passes and it's not this case, then is the default. Well, we don't have to actually do anything else. We could come in here and we can say. let's count the number of times this was called and let's add the age. Now the age is going to just be this value P of zero. We cast that to unsigned int, add it to the sum and everything else should work the same way. In addition to if we have some mysterious person trying to pass like a null, um, a null Buff byte buffer. So let's say somebody did like this. That's a null byte buffer. And say so if somebody said P, we should see an error message telling us that you know we have an invalid parameter. Okay. And then of course if they pass a byte buffer that is actually valid, but the age is invalid. So byte and then 220 or 212, 210. That's an age value that we can accept. Okay, so let's run it and see. And let's see, did I run, am I running the same code? I expected, oh, well, I'm returning error message, but okay, I don't print out my error messages. So I'm going to say ERR, so n cool, um, comma ERR equals, colon equals, and then I'm going to print this out, fmt that print ln, and I'm gonna say uh, end and error. And then I'm gonna do the same thing below here. And this time, I'll put it below here, and I'm gonna say end comma error equals, since I already created them, they exist, I, I'm not gonna do the colon. And now if I run again, I can see zero invalid parameter, zero age must be less than 127, which is, this is an invalid parameter here, and then here the age is too great, and then I print out my age. So, all right, so thanks for your time. This was, I think we're going at a good pace here, and see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed, please do, please continue to spread the word. Take care, have a great day, bye.